for more on this, so we're now joined by Michael Bagriam, who's a labor lawyer, and he joins us via our video link. Michael, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on uh, the late edition. Perhaps let's start off here. Uh, what are your expectations when it comes to the midterm budget that we are expecting to hear on Wednesday? My expectations, unfortunately, are extremely low. Uh, mm. I think the minister's hands are tied behind his back. There's nothing left. There's nothing left in the coffers at all. The cupboard is bare. And for people to call for more investment into uh, all the issues that we've been talking about and that you've been watching the unions now for the last few minutes saying that they want, they just don't have the money. Um, we know that we're on the cusp of an election. Mm. Uh, this election will probably take a place in about May next year. And we also know that despite what the Minister of Finance is going to tell us, because it's going to tell us they can't afford increases for civil servants, yeah. they can't afford increases for any of the employees in the country, uh, he's going to say that. And the unions then will put pressure on the ANC, who will then cave in and offer the increases. And of course, the country can't afford it, and it will lead to more misery and destruction. The unfortunate state of affairs now is that that cupboard is completely bare. Uh, he can't conjure money out of nowhere. I know the minister said he's going to try and borrow more money, but yeah. we're already spending a large proportion of our tax money on paying back the interest on the borrowed money. Uh, the government has destroyed the fiscus. That's exactly what's happened. I, I must tell you, I've never seen it so bad in this country in the sense that We've now had 20 years of destruction of the fiscus. And to now suddenly turn around and say, well, let's see if we can put some money into the, the trade union movement. Uh, I, I don't know where they're going to find the money uh, unless they can try and borrow their way into paying more money for the employees of South Africa. I don't see any way he can turn. Um, it's the most horrible job that he's got. But it's his own fault. It's the ANC's fault yeah. that they are here now and we're in a situation right now where the country has got nothing to give. And, you know, a number of labor unions and a number of reports uh, saying that uh, uh, there must be an end to austerity measures. Do you think that this is something that he will indeed be looking into? You know, you make a point uh, that we are heading towards the 2024 elections. Well, yes, and that the point is the minister can't in all honesty say to the employees of South Africa, to the civil servants, that I've got money to be able to afford increases. He can't say that. And he's going to be placed in a situation where he'll say no. They will be sabre-rattling, as you've heard. The labor unions are, are really angry. And you can understand where they're coming from. Things are becoming more expensive. Things are becoming more uh, impossible to make ends meet. And they're sitting in a situation where they need to pay more for their food, for their accommodation, for transport. You, you name it, they've got to pay more for everything and they're not getting the increases. So they're going to have to put pressure, political pressure, on an ANC government. Who The history of the ANC government has been, despite the fact they haven't got the money, they then collapse and they then give the increase. They're going to have to do that to try and keep the unions on their side when it comes to an election. Yeah. Um, of course, that pushes the state into more bankruptcy than ever. Mm. What we really need the money for is we need money to build up a, an infrastructure, not to spend more money on salaries, unfortunately. Uh, we've also got to be very careful because we have to pay for welfare. We have a large proportion of South Africans on welfare they are barely being able to put food on the table. And so where we are at the moment is that the government's got pressure from the trade unions for more salary. We've got pressure from the unemployed who need more welfare. And we've got pressure in that the infrastructure in South Africa is collapsing. Mm. That, add all that up and there's nothing left in the, in the cupboard. Mm. You know, it's the old story of old mother Hubbard opened a cupboard and there's nothing there. Um, it's absolutely bare. Mm. And this is not, doesn't come as a surprise and a shock. It's not like something happened and crept on us uh, in a few days. This has been built up for over 20 years. The government has been stealing. 
uh, uh, major politicians have all got very big pockets. Um, money has been spent on cadre deployment where people yeah. can't do the jobs. And it's, it's sad because who suffers at the end of the day? The workers suffer. They do suffer. Yeah. And, and Michael, I, I when, it comes to, sense, when it comes to yeah. the minister, uh, you know, you, speak, you keep on speaking about the elections and, you know, he will want to satisfy the unions. Uh, what role are the elections going to play uh, when uh, he delivers uh, the speech on Wednesday? I don't think he's going to have his eye on the elections. The minister can't. He's got to say, this is what I've got. This is how I can spread out the money, the small bit of money I've got left. And he's going to say, well, I can't afford the increases for the civil servants. It'll be the ANC afterwards when the unions put pressure, political pressure on the ANC, who then will say, well, never mind the fact that the minister said he hasn't got money. We're going to throw more money at it. We've seen this. Every single budget for the last five years, at least, where the minister says, I don't have, and then behind the scenes, pressure, political pressure is put on them, and then they have to increase mm. the offers that are being made. We saw this a few years back when the ANC actually offered a three-year wage increase. They couldn't afford it, and in the third year, they said, well, we don't have the money, and then they found a gap to actually cheat the unions by saying we've got a a point, a legal point, where we don't have to give the increase. Despite the fact they, they offered the increase, they uh, negotiated the increase, they signed for the increase, they then went to court and said, we can't, we can't give you the increase because we unfortunately have to cheat you. Mm -hmm. And they did that. And the unions know that they got the political strength to be able to bully the ANC at the end of the day, which is to the detriment of the whole country. Yeah. And unfortunately. Michael Mm. I don't think the minister, sorry, no. and, I don't and, think the minister will listen to that. Yeah, and Michael, we keep on hearing that there is no money. The minister has said it, uh, you know, uh, we've exceeded really the revenue of this country. When it comes mm. uh, to what the minister can cut back on, uh, clearly here from what you are saying, there's not much uh, wiggle room. No, no, there isn't. And I think he's being absolutely honest by saying we need austerity measures. Mm. Absolutely honest. He's the man that's got to answer at the end of the day when he offers X and he can't afford to pay for X, he's got to answer that. So he won't do it. What he will do is say that I can't afford it. And then, like I said, an ANC, a duplicitous government, will then say, all right, we'll give it to you, but we want your vote in return. And they'll be selling South Africa down the river, unfortunately. It's a very sad state of affairs where our government is going to get bullied to bankrupt the country even more than that it, where it is. It's going to take a long time, many, many years to try and overcome what has been destroyed by this government. Mm. And clearly here, it leaves uh, the minister with no choice uh, but to borrow. And, uh, you know, that's where we are at right now. Well, yes, of course. And you know what the borrowing is costing us uh, more and more. I mean, we've actually just insulted America. So the money is coming at a much higher price. And by the time we finish with all the borrowing, we'll be spending half our income on the interest on this money that we've borrowed. My money doesn't come cheap anymore. Yeah. Um, they, we're not, they're not going to throw money at South Africa. It comes expensive. So this is going to take years to dig ourselves out of this hole. So when we get a new government, they're going to inherit the nightmare left behind by an ANC government. All right, then, uh, Michael, thank you so much uh, for your time here on SABC News. That is uh, Michael Bagriam. He is a labor lawyer there, just giving us his insight in terms of what we can expect from the minister's announcement on that midterm budget report that will be uh, delivered on Wednesday.